Hi there! Today, uh, in another one of those uh, special videos of mine, I'm going to tell you about the uh, often forgotten bit of color theory, uh, the subjective bit, actually, uh, which is color temperature. Uh, color temperature is very important for, uh, for, 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 in, in, for miniature painters uh, because it can uh, really, really enhance uh, the atmosphere and the ambiance and 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 um, and the, the shadowing and the highlighting color temperature is uh, relative uh, nobody quite knows why maybe it's biological uh, but um, people are uh, put on edge by lighter brighter more vivid colors and by warmer colors and they are put more at ease by colder ones, and desaturated ones, subdued ones, darker ones. Maybe it's because, because of our atmosphere, the, 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 um, the further away something is, the bluer and, and darker it appears, and the more grey it appears, just like the sky, for example, or mountains that are far away. Uh, in the same fashion, uh, the, the, the closer it is, and the more violent it is, uh, usually the warmer it is. Uh, blood, for example, is red, and it's also the color of violence, the color of, of uh, fire, movement, that sort of thing, of, of poisonous snakes and, and animals that are all, all, all bright yellow and red to warn off uh, predators. Uh, that, that's that's um, or to attract insects and that sort of thing for for plants. Um, bright colors uh, are synonym with life, and warm colors are synonym with life, movement, that sort of thing. Cold colors are more mineral, if you will. There's a lot of green in nature, therefore, apparently, the human species has evolved to uh, consider green. Uh, somewhat uh, a neutral color, an, an appeasing one, at least, if you're not colorblind, that is. Mm. So, uh, why is that important to miniature painters? Because you can play with that. You can have, for example, uh, cold uh, colors in your shadows, to make they seem more deep, you know, without tending to black and without desaturating them. You can shadow a color with some blue, for example. Uh, let's 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 have this red here. Let me show you here. That's red. We'll shadow it with. Uh, a tinge of blue and some grey, but with a bit of blue in it, mm, so that it's nice and subdued. You see, this is very, very cold, pretty much. Well, this is at least colder than the, than the red. Um, and. There. See, if you shade the red with that, the shadows will be somehow deeper. Imagine, if you will, that these are the pleats of, of a cloak and Here you have perhaps shadows here and there, you know. Um, this isn't uh, actually the, the blue isn't a, a darker color, not but not by much at least. I haven't used black. 
I've just used gray and blue, and you see already this sounds th this 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 seems to you nearer. This seems to you further away. This seems a bit flowy. I know this is pretty schematic, you know, but see what I mean. Same for every color. You can you can um, you can also highlight something with a warmer color, for example, ivory, instead of uh, pure white, which is neutral, uh, to, to make it seem nearer and more lively. You can highlight it with something cold, if you want. You can transgress this. This is not a rule. This is merely a, a recommendation. If you highlight it with something cold, it will seem more uh, appeased, more crisp, more mineral. Uh, if you have warm shadows, uh, the, 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 the whole miniature will seem more alive, warmer, as if, as if it glowed from beneath. But you'll have to find darker colors to shade your, uh, your miniature, uh, because uh, the shadows will seem nearer then. Anyway, um, this, is, this is interesting. Uh, because, uh, of course, blue, green, uh, are, and purple, some purples, are actually cold colors, generally, when, the, when they're neutral on the color circle. And uh, some purples, some, some the, the reds and the yellows, are all considered warm colors uh, when they're on the color circle. Uh, of course, well, when we're talking about their neutral hues, so to speak, their basic hues. We've talked about hues before, remember. However, there are cold versions of the warm colors and warm versions of, of the cold ones. Yes, there are. Usually to make one, you take, uh, for example, the cold color and you add a little bit of the warmer colors to it, and then it will tend towards brownish uh, black, uh, or if you if you do it uh, with a lighter color, it won't tend towards black as much, and it will tend towards the the brownish. It will be slightly desaturated, but it will also be warmer. There are, for example, warm greens, uh, such as um, khaki green. Or uh, let's see this 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 one for example. This is army green from Code Darms, and I will show you here. This is yes, it is dark, but it is a warm green. Let me show you how how it is light. It tends towards the brown, but it is. A warm green as opposed to a green that has a little more blue in it. Blue is the coldest color of all. Um, green that has a, a lot more blue in it uh, would be, uh, for example, uh, this. See? This little turquoise here. This is jade green. Oh. There. And here we have added some blue and some white. To basic green, so to speak. See? This is cold, colder at least. Well, although it's still slightly warm. I mean, uh, if you want something really cold, well, we'll have to make it ourselves. We'll ha uh, have a little blue. And we'll have uh, somewhat neutral green. Iosin green from Proviteur Press seems like a decent neutral color. Here. A bit 
too much green. I'll let the blue in there. Have something cold. This is colder, isn't it? I'll add a little white so you can see it better. Yeah, this is a cold green. This is a warmer green. This is cold. This is actually more sa more uh, saturated. We have talked about saturation before. Color temperature is actually slightly subjective for the borderline nuances of purple, for example, or green. You can't really tell sometimes if, if it's warm or if it's cold on its own, but you can always tell relatively to another color if it's colder or warmer. You know, if it's more red, yellowish, or if it's more bluish, uh, greenish. Um, because it's all, it's all relative, you know. Um, it's, it's all in, in, the, in the nuance. If, if a color is colder than the main color you're using, or warmer than it, you know. Uh, you, you don't have to determine if one color is cold on its own. It's actually either cold or warm on in the context of your miniature. This is important or important for, for, for harmony as well, uh, because, because you might want to, to, to do contrast with it. Uh, if you have uh, a limited palette, a limited color scheme, it might be uh, interesting for you to differentiate different uh, parts of your miniature with uh, color, colors of, of the same hue that are more or less bright, more or less saturated, but also colder or warmer. And of course, as I said, it's useful for shading and highlighting. Um, it's also useful for metal, for example. Uh, I like my gold to be slightly warm. Of course, it's already yellowish, so it's, it's warmer. But I like to accentuate that by putting some dark reds in the shadows of my gold. Some people, on the contrary, like cold, uh, colder shadows in, in, uh, in their gold for a, for, a, for a crispier effect. Usually, steel, for example, is, is painted in a, in a, in a neutral gray, but for extra uh, crispiness for, for blades, for example, oftentimes you'll find that steels have uh, hues of blue in it, enriching the tone. And, um, and, and you'll find that, uh, that, that bronzes, although very warm, have colder shadows. Some painters like to like to paint uh, colder shadows on bronze and and that sort of thing because it reminds of the of the verdigris that really really um, uh, enhances uh, a good bronze and makes it more realistic. You know, it subdues the shadows so that it can be brighter, brighter than. Um, well, that's that's basically it for for color temperature. Uh, Use it as you will. Uh, color temperature is used for uh, for atmosphere and um, at, at your leisure uh, to, to to convey a certain sentiment. Warmer colors are, as I said, uh, more lively, and and cold colors are more subdued. Uh, elves often have crisp, uh, silvery armors with blue hues and blue uh, um, uh, tabards and that sort of thing, you know, very noble, vivid but noble, cold, stable, and uh, orcs are all in, in, uh, in, in uh, uh, warm greens and vivid uh, banners of, of yellow and red and blood and that sort of thing. Uh, it's very violent, if you will. You see, that's, that's the, the, the studio colors are not uh, innocently chosen. Signar is blue with gold highlights. It's more noble, more stable, that sort of thing. That's the Signar mentality. 
uh, in the privately oppressed Iron Kingdoms. And Kador is red, uh, heavy, bloody, uh, aggressive, you see? So none, none of that is innocent. Use it as you see fit, but use it because most people do. Bye then! <laughs>